Welcome to the VEX Robotics Competition Referee Training Videos. We've created this series of training videos for two reasons. One, to help VRC referees prepare for the current game, and two, to give VRC participants a better understanding of the thinking that goes into referee decisions. This year, we've produced a series of short videos on various refereeing topics that you can find here on our YouTube channel, VEX Robotics TV, or download directly from our website. Just a reminder, we've been producing these videos for a few seasons now. Make sure that you're always watching the videos for the current season. Our first episode, Chapter 1, is an overview of the referee position. We'll discuss what it takes to be a VRC referee and what their key roles are. Refereeing is one of the most challenging and rewarding volunteer positions in the VEX Robotics competition. Just like at sporting events, the referees are there to enforce the rules of the game. However, unlike traditional sporting events, VRC referees actually help the competitors to avoid breaking the rules. This is one of the key facets of being a VRC ref. We want referees who liberally caution and educate teams about infractions before they occur. The key roles of a referee are making sure the field is set up correctly for each match, being cognizant of the schedule and keeping the event running on time, ensuring that teams are placed correctly at the field and prepared to compete, consistently enforcing the rules of the game as written, and completing and submitting an accurate score sheet at the end of the match. The key attributes that an effective referee should possess are being an effective decision maker, confidently projecting authority, being assertive yet tactful, thorough knowledge of the game rules, strong communication skills, and attention to detail. Most events will have a head referee. This person is in charge of all refereeing and gameplay at the event. They will have some additional key roles, which include training all event referees and ensuring that they are fully versed in the game rules, working with the event partner, queuing staff, and other volunteers to ensure that matches are proceeding in a timely fashion, working with the lead inspector to ensure that all robots are safe and rule compliant, making all final decisions and rulings, and discussing these rulings with the teams. Through this series of training videos, we'll go over many specific situations and events pertaining to this year's game. But before we do that, here are some general refereeing tips. One referee role is to watch for violations and call them. These teams have put a lot of time and effort into the competition. So please help them before they violate the rules. It is the philosophy of the VEX Robotics competition to be helpful rather than punitive when it comes to refereeing. This means warning teams verbally if they are close to being penalized. This is extremely important to ensure that everyone has a positive competition experience. Often, as a referee who knows the game manual thoroughly, you will see when a team is about to violate a rule. Feel free to warn them about their potential actions because it's possible that they may not even realize that what they are doing is potentially illegal. This can be a great learning opportunity for them. Second, be fair and consistent to all teams. All teams expect and deserve to be treated in the same manner. Over the course of an event or season, you may get to know some of the competitors personally. This is okay, but always remember that consistency is crucial to ensuring a fair event for all attendees, not just your friends. Third, Always be friendly and positive. As a fieldside presence for these teams, you help to set the tone for your event. Many referees are former or current competitors themselves. Think about how much of your event experience was influenced by positive interactions with referees or other volunteers and strive to create that experience for others. Plus, in the event that you do have to make a difficult call, teams will be much more receptive to your feedback if they recognize you as a knowledgeable and positive guide from earlier interactions throughout the day. Fourth, a referee's job is to enforce the rules as they are written, not as they think they should be written. A referee should never alter rules, add rules, or penalize teams who do not play the game the way that the referee feels is right. You should never make a call, give a warning, or enforce a violation without having a specific rule from the game manual to reference. Fifth, when it comes to issues such as disqualifications and disablements, referees will often rule too leniently in order to avoid being harsh. Unfortunately, not penalizing a team for a rules violation results in directly penalizing their opponent. As unpleasant as this may be, 
if a team violates a rule that leads to a disqualification, they must be disqualified. It's the only fair thing to do. Disqualifications mostly occur in only match affecting situations. This makes it even more important to make the correct call, because the violation may have resulted in a win for that team. For more details, please see Chapter 5 in this series. In addition, all team questions should be directed to the head referee. The head referee should be the only person discussing rulings with the teams. When multiple referees try to explain rulings directly to teams, inconsistencies in verbiage can easily arise and cause confusion. To this end, the head referee should explain all controversial rulings and close calls to the teams after all referees confer separately as necessary. When handled correctly, this level of communication can be a positive experience for both referees and teams. Referees also play a crucial role in enforcing Rule G1 and the REC Foundation Code of Conduct. If a team or any of its members, such as students or any adults associated with the team, are disrespectful or uncivil to event staff, volunteers, or fellow competitors, they may be disqualified from a current or upcoming match. Team conduct pertaining to G1 may also impact a team's eligibility for judged awards. Repeated or egregious violations of the expectations in G1 or the Code of Conduct may result in consequences up to the disqualification of the team or the organization from the current event, future events, or potentially removal from the program after review by the REC Foundation. As a referee, if you see a team exhibiting behavior not consistent with G1 or the Code of Conduct, make sure to report this to event judges and the event partner for consideration. All referees should have read the VRC game manual prior to your event. At the event, make sure that you have printed copies or quick access to digital copies of the most recent version of the manual for reference. The manual is updated each year around June 15th, August 17th, and April 5th. Check for the manual footer to make sure you are using the correct version. We also highly recommend downloading the VRC Hub app. This app includes a complete set of up-to-date rules and a great search function. As mentioned before, whether you use the printed manual or the digital app, you should always use a quote or rule from the game manual when answering student questions. This is the best way to ensure that the correct rules are being communicated and that you are being fair and consistent to all teams. That's all for Chapter 1, but make sure you check out the other chapters that explore other refereeing topics.